Hey everybody, this is Mark from Northwest Bourbon. Tonight I'm going to be trying the five bottles on my bar that I would rank last. Because last time I tried them, I didn't really care for them. But they've been open for a little while. My palate has of course adjusted and changed and developed, you know, over the last few months. So I'm going to revisit those bottles that I consider my least favorite bottles on my bar that, you know, I stick in the back behind the stuff that I actually drink. And I'm just going to revisit them, see if uh, maybe it changed my mind a little bit, or at least describe to you why I rank these last. That way you don't make the mistake that I did and actually buy them. But we'll see. Alright, first up I have 1776. Alright, this is the James E. Pepper Straight Bourbon. 1776, 100 proof, unfiltered. Has a lot of those bonus words on there. It says, in this bottle lies the oldest and most legendary whiskey in Kentucky history. The same old style and methods have been preserved and restored in this fine whiskey. Lots of buzzwords going on. Has the cool snake on the back. So when I saw it, I was just like, heck yes, this looks like it's in my wheelhouse all day. America, let's go. Kind of a light copper. It smells like good bourbon. Cheers. I get a little bit of vanilla on the front of my tongue. Like the middle of my tongue and middle of the mouth is just empty, hollow. Uh, back of the tongue has a lot of uh, herbal spices and baking spices, lots of stuff going on. And then the finish is a long finish that's all pepper. This is not as bad as I remember it. A little bit of sweetness up front and lots of spice in the back kind of a strong finish. It, it's, it's not very exciting, not very complex, but it's a lot smoother than I remember it to be. Okay. All right, so next on the list was one that I was really excited about when I bought it, but not so excited about it when I tasted it. This is the Bodelin from Far North Spirits. Now, Far North Spirits is in the northern part of Minnesota, like 25 miles from Canada, and they claim to be the farthest north distillery in the continental U.S. Now, their farm, the, uh, the Swanson family, is like a fourth generation farm, started in like 1917, and so all of the stuff in this bottle is grown on that farm. And so it is a true family craft whiskey which just got me excited about it a fourth generation farm that every single thing in this bottle is from that land of which it got distilled on come on man that is some great stuff to support right there family business 47 APB 94 proof this is their bourbon whiskey called the Bodalen and uh, it's named after a Norwegian Valley and so it being a true craft distillery family owned farm beautiful bottle I got excited about it I couldn't wait for it to get to my house so let's revisit it because it's been probably two or three months since I even tried it again oh my god that nose is super sweet that nose hasn't changed at all I remember that like it was yesterday even though it's been months it smells like cotton candy like it smells incredibly sweet but there's a like a floral note to it as well like uh, like it like like an air freshener this bourbon smells like a freaking air freshener all right cheers. let's try it again so floral. I don't think I've ever had a bourbon that's more floral than this. Like if you stuffed a dandelion or a daisy or a tulip, yeah, a tulip. 
If you stuffed a tulip in the side of your mouth and took a drink of whiskey, that's what I'm getting on this. Extremely floral. All right, second sip came with a little bit more spice in the back of my mouth. There's really no finish. A lot of sweetness on the front that's all, it's, it's, it's very viscous. It is super mouth coating um, to where I just feel it. Like there's this oily layer all over my tongue and my teeth. Pink candy, like pink candies, like Laffy Taffy's, cotton candy, all the super sweet candy that you can think of that is pink is all over the front of your tongue and on, on in your cheeks your cheeks are stuffed with tulips and roses and daisies and just just flowers and then uh, that like I said that second sip brought a little bit more spice to the back so I'm actually getting a little bit more spice on it now but not my jam that is still not my jam kind of tastes like jam though a little bit. It's weird. Weird. Alright, next up is Smoke Wagon. Alright, this is the Smoke Wagon Straight Bourbon. 46.25 APB, 92.5 proof. And I was hearing so much great things about Smoke Wagon on Whiskey Tube. And their 92 proof straight bourbon is the only one I could find. All the uncut, unfiltered, and everything else was sold out, and I couldn't find it. So I bought the straight bourbon, tried it, and I was very unimpressed. So let's see how it's developed and how I've adjusted, see if this treats me better today than last time I tried it. Very weak on the nose. Smells like a buttery whiskey. There's a little bit of a uh, pie crust or like fortune cookies or some kind of like a hard dried buttery bread going on in there. Cheers guys. Let's try the old smoke wagon out again. You can taste some barrel, taste a little bit of honey. There's like a burnt butter flavor. A lot of that sweetness on the tip of your tongue. Lots of honey and vanilla on the tip of the tongue. A little bit of spice on the back. The middle is, is kind of hollow and leaves leaves the majority of your palate unfulfilled. And uh, and and wow, that's just incredibly boring. Yeah, that's that's just super boring MGP. Get some smoky butter and a little bit of vanilla. Just not much going on there not very much complexity or it doesn't bring a lot of other flavors to the table it's it's pretty boring so one of my most disappointing bottles was Hirsch Horizon and I don't have that bottle anymore because what I did is I put it in one of my little barrels and mixed it with something that had a lot of complexity to it and it was a little bit over the top when it came to its spiciness and whatnot mixed the Hirsch Horizon with something else and uh, got it to be something drinkable and so that's I, I that's why I like those little barrels because if you grab something that's really floral and really sweet and you're just like wow that's a little much and then you have another bottle that's like, wow, that's really spicy. And like the spiciness is overwhelming. Some of that. Mix those two bottles together, put it in the barrel for a month, and then pour it, and boom, all of a sudden you've got a perfectly balanced bourbon. Why they couldn't do that at the distillery, I don't know. But I'm not a scientist. All right, so next on my list was a local craft bourbon which I love putting local craft bourbons made here in the Pacific Northwest. I love putting them in the spotlight and telling you guys, hey, look these guys up. Go to their website 
and if your state allows them to mail you something, you can buy stuff straight off their website. It's great. Go to WoodenvilleWhiskeyCompany.com and freaking buy some bottles off of them because if, if they're allowed to ship to your state or you live here in Washington, they can ship it right to you and it's freaking fantastic. Or find a buddy to buy you some and have them ship it to you and have it labeled uh, soap samples. Or, yeah, write homemade hot sauce on there and, and have your buddy ship it to you. So I was at a liquor store in Tacoma, which is uh, north of the base, and I saw this nice, simple label, like Warrior. And I was like, dude, what is this? Looked at it, it's made in Spokane, Washington. I was like, okay, okay. Now you're speaking my language. Give me a local craft bourbon. So Warrior Buzzword Premium, Premium Craft Bourbon Whiskey is a 46% APV, 92 proof. It says veteran owned right there on the label. And so I'm like, okay. So a craft bourbon whiskey made in my state with a distillery owned by veterans, absolutely 100% every day of the week, I'm gonna buy it. And I'm gonna make a video on it because I'm gonna support you guys every single freaking day of the week. Love it. But as you can see, not much has been taken out of this bottle yet. The first try I had of it, I was just like, no, that's not my jam. Sorry brothers, that's not my jam. Um, so I wanna revisit it today to see if it does a little bit more for me. All right, so grab the Warrior. The Washington Warrior. Coming to make some bourbon. The last time I tried it, I thought it was mediocre. Well, it smells good though. Maybe this bottle just needed some time to open up, huh? Because it smells good. It smells like you put a little caramel on a fresh baked biscuit. Yeah, this smells like good bourbon right here, Warrior. Yeah, there's some spikes in there. There's some spikes. Um, they haven't got the balance down yet. There is some really nice, smooth flowing caramel and honey and uh, baking spices. Then all of a sudden you get sharp spikes of like grass and some bitterness. Uh, which I would assume comes from the, the tannins and the barrels and there's there's some sharp spikes in there that like kind of hit throughout your mouth while it's sitting there and there there's really not much of a finish to speak of let me go in again I said grass before but it's hay definitely not grass it's hay 100% hay so caramel, vanilla, then all of a sudden a huge sharp spike of hay, then a sharp spike on the other side of your mouth of just bitterness from like the barrel. And then there's like literally no finish. And so I have high hopes for them. I have high hopes for you, Warrior. I really do. Because I think you've got the recipe right, but maybe the uh, wherever you're getting your barrels or um, aging how long you're aging it there's something in there that's just not hitting right um, it's not as bad as I remember it though for sure and it was and it was it was pretty inexpensive and so when I saw a veteran owned from Washington State and it was it was like 30 bucks or something um, I don't remember but there's a, a lot of potential there. You know, there's a lot of potential. Um, I believe in you guys, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep my eye out to see if you guys put out some good stuff in the future. You know what I mean? All right, guys, so last on my list is the Navigator. It has got a pretty busy bottle. But when I saw this at the store, saw that it was less than 50 bucks for this nice straight bourbon whiskey finished in navigator red wine barrels 
And from what I remember, it had like a serious funk to it that I just could not get into. So let's let's revisit this bad boy to see if it still has that funk for me. Now I'm trying this one last on purpose because it's finished in wine barrels. And so when it comes to a single night of drinking, I think that you should not start with the highest proof that you got and you should not start with something finished because everything after that, your palate's gonna be already adjusted to something different. Oh man, I smell a lot of strawberry. I don't remember this being like a, a sweet, delicious strawberry. It's been a while since I've tried this one. Because I tried it a few times, thinking, oh, it's going to be like Angel's Envy, but a little bit different. And it just wasn't as good. I don't remember it smelling like strawberries before, though. got a lot of good sweet qualities to it you can taste the wine for sure so if you like your bourbons finished in a wine cast you definitely get that you know wine finish on the finish it tastes like you just drank some wine 100% front of the palate is all sweet red berries nice you know good traditional bourbon uh, baking spices and goodness um, but there's definitely some sharp spikes of funk in the middle. Uh, the middle of the palate has got some crazy sharpness to it that uh, is just a funkiness I, I still don't really enjoy. Yeah, the, the second sip was a little bit more bitter than the first sip. It had, had like a bitterness quality to it and was more drying. It was much more drying of the mouth than the first one. Like, you know, if you get those dry red wines. So yeah, that bad boy is definitely gonna stay on my bottom five. Hey guys, thanks for uh, joining me, revisiting my bottom five on my shelf. Uh, I thought it was fun to go back and see what good and bad qualities I was still tasting in some of those bottles that I had ranked as bottom five. Comment below what bottles you would advise other people not to buy. So leave that comment below. Like, subscribe. All right, so let's try putting all five of those in one glass and seeing if that makes it good. Because if it does, I'm gonna put them all in that barrel. All right, so this is the mix of all five of them. So. Nope, nope. Dude, the flowers with the red wine funk, with the spicy, ooh, that's too much, nope got to take one of those out I think it's the red wine I think if I mix these four I think that'll probably be good yeah nope all right guys these are my bottom five what's your bottom five cheers keep your drinks wet